Nicholas and I was born on July 31st, 1923 in the suburbs of New Kingston, Pennsylvania. I know, that's probably about ages ago to you children. Well, while I'm here, I might as well just talk about my past. I come from a family of five. There's my mom, Nellie, my dad, Joe, my two brothers, and me. My dad died when I was 10 years old. He taught me a lot of important things in life, such as patience and determination. During this time, I would watch my brother after getting home from the academy. I had dreams of going to medical school, but the price was too expensive. I graduated in 1946 with a degree majoring in chemistry. I couldn't continue my dream of becoming a doctor, so I went to work for the DuPont Company in New York. While working in the DuPont Company, I got a good reputation as a hard worker. I then transferred to their research station in Delaware, where I worked on making newer, stronger, and stiffer fibers to make better tires. It was believed that if the automobile cars had better tires, they would make the vehicles more gas efficient. During the research, there was a cloudy chemical which was often thrown out, but I was curious about it. I wanted to see what would happen if I spun the thread with the fibers. I asked the person in charge of spinning, a man named Charles Moy, to test the solution, but he didn't want to. He kept saying no. What is it with women not being taken seriously? Eventually, he agreed, and a few weeks later, I discovered that the fibers were made very strong and didn't break. In fact, these fibers are about nine times stiffer than anything else of the kind, even better than nylon. I patented this discovery since it was mine, and five years and $400 million later, we discovered something very incredible. These fibers were strong enough to pull a crane and stop bullets. Can you believe that? These super strong fibers have a name. They are called poly, well, since I can barely pronounce it, let's just call it Kevlar. Does anybody know much about Superman? He is a person with super duper powers. He can fly, he is strong, and he can even see through walls. Kevlar is just like that. It is similar because it only has one weakness, just like Superman. The weakness is all around us, even right at this very moment. The weakness is sunlight. If it is exposed to sunlight for too long, it will lose its strength. Remember those things I mentioned at the beginning? Well, all these things have Kevlar in them, even if you don't see it. Because of Kevlar, bulletproof vests are possible. Why is this important? Well, let me tell you the story of the deadliest chase. So, there is this trooper, Robert Nicholas, and he is chasing a speeding car on a highway in Pennsylvania. His car and the driver's car flew off into a bank in a bank of earth. The driver opened his door and started running, trying to escape. But Robert Miklich chased him. The speeder turned around and shot him right in the shoulder. Blood started pouring out of his wound. Another bullet hit him square in the chest, right over his heart. There wasn't any blood, and there wasn't even a dent in the vest. My invention helped to save his life, along with about 3,000 animal policemen. Now, I need a volunteer to demonstrate what happened to Robert Miklich. Yeah, I sure can. Um, Brandon. When the time tunnel took you away from where you were, what were you doing at the time that you got stuck to the year 2012? Oh, I was getting an interview. Oh. Yeah. Are you going to hire somebody for the lab or something? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. More kids want to learn about me at Brentwood. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Good. <laughs> you look pretty good for a 90-year-old. Oh, I dyed my hair before I came here. <laughs>
back into the time tunnel, Stephanie. Um, that's very, I didn't know that there was this sunshine thing that can begin to degrade the strength of the, of the Kevlar, huh? It was in the sunlight too much. Now, did you happen to find out, and if you didn't, that's okay, you did a great job, no problem if you don't know the answer. Did you happen to find out what do police officers do with these Kevlar vests to help prevent that from happening? Because they'll be out in the sunshine sometimes. I see. Interesting. And how much exposure to sunlight has to happen before it begins to not be very useful anymore? Do you know? Well, you know, since I'm a chemist, I didn't really find out about that, and I don't okay. wear a lot of Kevlar vests. Not like in my wardrobe or anything. Uh -huh. But, so I don't really have an exact answer. That's okay. Awesome job. Let's give her a big hand, everybody. That was really good.